I'm just an average guy who loves the outdoors. I love to hunt and I love to fish. Somewhere along the way I ended up with a video camera in my hand. So now I'm just cruising around checking out cool destinations. So sit back, put your feet up and come on along. I'm Brian Whitens, and this is where I've been. We all love spring, summer, and fall, but then winter sets in. Everything sort of stops. We hunker down indoors and wait for it to end. But why? Because it's too cold? Because there's nothing to do? Winter is really a lot like the rest of the year, just with a different set of activities. Sure, the temperature's colder, so you have to put on a little more clothes. It's still a great time to get out and enjoy the outdoors. For me, I have a tendency to travel north to Ontario, but it really doesn't matter where you are or where you go, as long as you get out and enjoy it. In the summer, you go ATVing. In the winter, snowmobiling. Summer, hiking. Winter, snowshoeing or cross-country skiing. In the summer, you're fishing. In the winter, well, you're fishing. But your boat has been replaced by a snowmobile. Ice fishing is a great sport no matter which frozen lake you're sitting on. I spend a lot of time fishing in Ontario in the spring, summer and fall, so it's inevitable that I end up there in the winter. Ice fishing in Ontario is great, whichever species you're fishing for. You know, probably the, the, the most interesting thing about coming up to Sunset Country to go ice fishing is the opportunities that exist. Uh, there's really nowhere else in North America that you can go and have the, the multi-species options that we have here. You know, from Kenora to Atacoke and Red Lake, Thunder Bay, uh, fantastic walleye fishing, giant lake trout, numbers of lake trout, big pike, white fish. Um, we've got a lot of a lot of lakes with stock tr uh, brook trout, splake, rainbows, um, some natural brook trout if you go more east and north, uh, crappies, perch. I mean, it just goes on and on. One thing we do have is big pike, and this this right here is a quick strike rig with a big dead tulipy and by far the best way to catch these big fish so you can see this one's kind of frozen and beat up a bit I had I used it the other day and I never got hit with it and uh, but it's still good and we're gonna put it down you set these things about a foot off the bottom and what it does is it sets the the bait in a natural position when it's hanging down there a lot of quick strike rigs are uh, you know inline so the bait actually sits like that and they catch fish too um, but I prefer to have a horizontal natural presentation like that so it's a really heavy fluorocarbon like 100 120 pound tests I don't know what it's really heavy and those fish won't bite won't bite through that I've, I've used these rigs for years never had one fail on me before so well so then once you get them in the water you got to squeeze them and you can kind of see the air coming out of them and then once you do that you're good to go There she goes. I'm setting this tip up down right now. Look at that. Okay, you ready? Oh, I just dropped it. No, no. There he is. <laughs> I was just feeling for the bottom, and all of a sudden the thing started going off. <laughs> so he was hanging around. He's close. Whoa. There he goes. This is a nice big fish. <laughs> you want to really be careful. I should have mitts on doing this. This tip up line we got on here is pretty soft, but if you use braid or anything, you really got to be careful you don't wrap it around your hand when they do a power run like that. What you got there, Jeffrey? Oh, I think we got a big toothy critter, bud. Feels big. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. That is what Lake of the Woods is all about. <laughs> that is a con. Look at this. Look at the bait. 25 20, pound pike. 25 pound pike. <laughs> this is why you have to get to Lake of the Woods. That is sick, buddy. Wow. That's a monster. Okay. We 
We set up that, that quick strike rig and the tip up just for the heck of it. Every once in a while, you never know, you get these big pike like this, that just about makes a guy's winter right there. That yeah. is a true giant fish. I don't care where you go, anywhere in the world, that's a monster. She's happy, she's healthy, we'll get her back. This little bit of blood on my hand is actually from me, it's not from the fish, so. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Cool. We're giving away fishing trips. Simply register to attend the Real Outdoors Ultimate Online Sports Show and you'll be automatically entered into the drawing for a free Canadian fishing trip. Spend a week relaxing at a deluxe Canadian fishing lodge for free. It's that simple. Just sign up at ultimateonlinesportshow.com and you're automatically entered into the drawing. The Real Outdoors Ultimate Online Sports Show. Open seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's free and it's easy. Visit any time at www.ultimateonlinesportshow.com. Feels like one of those those big lake trout. Is that a walleye? No, this isn't a walleye. Definitely no fish under the ice fights as hard as these things do. They're almost nearest thing to a saltwater critter that I've ever caught before. Yeah, you know, a lot of guys that we both get guiding travel long, long ways up north to, to fish these things. And yeah. uh, they have no idea the size of these lake trout out in Lake of the Woods. It is a blast. Well, the other neat thing too with, with lake trout is they're more aggressive, more active under the ice than any other fish. And in the summertime, they're kind of confined to deep water areas and you can catch them, but it's just not the same. In the winter, they, they all get up and you can catch them five feet under the ice um, in shallow water or in deep water, but they're just, they're almost like sharks. They're always on the move looking for something to eat. Probably more people from, from Minnesota and Wisconsin, Michigan travel up here to ice fish for lake trout than any other, any other fish, so. And lake of the Woods isn't the best place for numbers, but there's some big fish here, so that's kind of a unique deal, but. There's a lot of little back lakes, backwater lakes, all, all across Sunset Country that you can snowmobile into and catch, uh, you know, numbers of fish, you can have 20, 30, 40 fish days. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't, you definitely don't get the size in the smaller lakes that you do out here in Lake of the Woods. This, there, there's nothing like it, really. These things are big and they are strong. It's so much fun to fight them on this light gear. Not done. No, and one thing you can't do, you know, you're, we're using walleye-sized tackle here, so uh, you just you can't pull them too hard. You just do what you can do, and and uh, when it's right, their head will sort of slide up the hole. But you know, you don't rush it. You enjoy it, and that's part of the that's part of the appeal to people for lake trout for catching lake trout. Yeah, and you know, again, it's nothing fancy. It's just nothing much more than a jig and minnow or some spoons you know you don't have to use the big heavy gear that lake trout are kind of known for it's you can stay light and, and still catch these things muscling you yeah. I'm not going to roll up my sleeves just yet. We got a nice big 10 inch hole, so we should be able to slide them in there. This is where you kind of just got to take your time. Oh, yeah, it's a really big fish, Jake. Wow. <laughs> See the air bubbles coming up? Lake trout have the ability to adjust their swim bladder. Most fish don't. There he is. Wow. <laughs> right there, you want to catch big fish, travel to Sunset Country, Northwest Ontario, and that's it, man. Wow, nice big lake trout. Beautiful. Really important you get big fish like this, you let them go. Don't keep them. They grow a half a pound a year, so that's a, you know, 
probably a 25 year old fish, 30 year old fish. You kill it, it takes 30 years to replace. So get them back, catch them again another day. On my last Ontario winter trip, I stopped by and visited with my good friend Pat at Cedar Point Lodge. Cedar Point is a beautiful lodge located on Ontario's famous Eagle Lake. Eagle is home to a variety of fish species including walleye, northern pike, muskie, lake trout, smallmouth bass, whitefish, crappie and perch. Turned out Pat had a little free time so we hopped on the sleds and cruised to a secluded part of the lake to drill some holes and drop some lines. We were joined by Pat's friend Eddie and my buddy Jason, who's been with us on several episodes. When most people think of Ontario, they think of walleye. And certainly Ontario is best known for its excellent walleye fishing, as well as trophy northern pike and muskie action. We tend to overlook one of Ontario's most incredible fishing opportunities. Oh. Lake trout. Without a doubt, Ontario is home to some of the best lake trout fishing on the planet. And in the northwestern part of the province, big lake trout keep anglers smiling all winter long. Lake trout season opens January 1st and the ice fishing is outstanding until around mid-April when the ice starts to become unsafe. Sports shows are a great place to search for outdoor products or a destination for your next hunting or fishing vacation. But it's not always easy to find the time or the money or even a show in your area. The Real Outdoors Ultimate Online Sports Show has all the features of a physical sports show without the hassles, expense, or even having to leave your home. Chat directly with exhibitors about their products or to plan your next hunting or fishing trip. Download brochures and watch videos. Attend seminars. Stop in at the show specials area to find great deals on a variety of hunting and fishing products and trips. Open 24-7, featuring a variety of live shows throughout the year. Register now for your chance to win a free Canadian fishing trip. The Real Outdoors Ultimate Online Sports Show. It's free and it's easy. Visit anytime www.ultimateonlinesportshow.com. Be sure to visit our website to find out more about upcoming live shows. For those who ride, winter can only mean one thing, snowmobiling. It wasn't until five years after the Wright brothers flew that the first vehicle built to go in the snow was born. That was the Lombard Log Hauler, a huge machine that resembled a steam locomotive with a half-track design and front skis. In 1913, Virgil White, a Ford dealer in New Hampshire, invented a track and ski unit conversion for a Model T Ford. He was the first to use the word snowmobile. In 1927, the first patent for a snowmobile was issued to Carl Eliasson of Sainer, Wisconsin. The patent listed Eliasson's invention as a snow machine. But it wasn't until 1954 that the modern-day recreational snowmobile was born. Then in 1958, Joseph Armand Bombardier designed the first modern snowmobile. 
Bombardier, who was considered the father of snowmobiling, began commercial production of the Ski Dog snowmobile in 1959. Due to a typographical error, it became the ski -Doo. The snow belt regions of both the U.S. and Canada are covered with miles upon miles of interconnecting trails snaking your way across the landscape like a system of backcountry highways, offering access to areas you may not normally have the chance to enjoy. I had the opportunity to travel on a small portion of Ontario's thousands of miles of scenic backcountry trails. Ontario features 26,000 miles of interconnecting groomed trails, the longest network of recreational trails in the world. The trails are groomed regularly, on a regular basis. Our, the majority of our funding comes from OFSC, which is Ontario Federation Snowmobile Club, based out of southern Ontario. Then we branch down to northwestern Ontario, Nawasta, and then that uh, brings in the small communities such as Atacocan, Sulaco, Brighton, and Kenora. And the way that we're connected all together is an A trail. The A trail runs right across Ontario, and we're just a small little portion of that big trail. But also, we have our regular um, club trails. We have the famous White Otter Castle. The White Otter Castle brings in a lot of tourists to Igney's area. The White Otter Loop is a club trail and it is for local people and also for uh, tourists to come in. The A Trail will link you into Igney's. So whether you wanted to trailer up by highway, uh, Trans Canada Highway, or come up by snow machine trails, you were able to get there. And the A Trail is an interactive trail and it is you are able to find this on the, um, the internet. If you went into OFSC, you look up um, the interactive trail, it will give you details of every trail and it also gives you the conditions of the trails. I had the opportunity on going on a 700 kilometer ride this year and uh, it was unbelievable. It was phenomenal. The trails in northwestern Ontario are unbelievable. They're smooth, they're well groomed, they're well signed. Uh, excellent trails and you can get from point A to point B very safely. The scenery is unbelievable. You cannot get better scenery. It's, it's peaceful, it's quiet out there. But there's all sorts of wildlife out there. I mean, there's moose, partridge, fox. Um, it's just fantastic. A, a, a little funny part about our moose, we love them, but they eat our signs. <laughs> and it's a big problem, way out in the middle of nowhere, and you've got these half-eaten signs, or they'll use them to shed their uh, their antlers. I, I really think sometimes that the bear and the moose have a competition on who's getting to the sign first because we've had them clawed and we've had them uh, chewed by the moose and bears. Uh, we try and stick to the trails so that the wildlife can still have their terrain, they have their space, and we just take that little portion of it. Snowmobiling is a huge, huge uh, market out there and uh, it's a great way to enjoy the outdoors. So come on down, bring the sled and come for a ride. Everybody likes a great deal. Real Outdoors often trades advertising for hunting and fishing trips or products. In an effort to move these quickly, we offer them at huge discounts and pass these deals on to you. Up to 50% off on a variety of hunting and fishing products and trips to great lodges and outfitters from around the U.S. and Canada. Visit realoutdoordeals.com and sign up for free to be instantly notified whenever a new deal pops up. Or follow us on Facebook to stay informed. Don't miss out on these tremendous deals. Visit realoutdoordeals.com today. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to mush your own team of sled dogs? Gliding silently down a scenic trail, across frozen lakes, along the open waters of a quietly flowing river. The feel of the trail whooshing by under the runners of the sled, the winter air in your face. The only sound, that of your team of dogs doing what they love to do most, pull. Sled dogs have been pulling people and cargo for hundreds of years, long before snowmobiles and airplanes. And I can tell you, when you're mushing along some remote trail in the true Canadian wilderness, your mind can't help but wander. Back to a time when dog sleds were the typical mode of transportation. The only mode of transportation for trappers and fur traders, for prospectors and mail carriers, for hunters, voyageurs, and travelers of all sorts. I 
had the opportunity to visit with Agamac River Outfitters, home of Run Silent Dog Sled Trips. This wonderful place is the result of the lifelong dream of John Oberg, who owns and operates the lodge along with his wife Daryl and daughter Joanna. He dreamed to live and operate in an area of endless wilderness. And what a beautiful area it is. Right now, I can't think of a better way to see it, to be part of it, than to be standing on the back of a sled and quietly passing through it, behind a team of anxious, excited, well-trained dogs. As their harnesses get slipped on and they get hooked up to the sled, they're hopping off the ground with excitement. Suddenly, Joanna says, let's go. Then, like somebody flicked a switch or turned a knob, it all goes silent. All you hear is the sound of the runners of the sled and the power and energy of 32 happy feet flying down the trail. There's no question they love their job. It's nothing quite like being out in the woods when it's all still and quiet traveling my dog team. It's such a unique way to travel. The nice thing about dog team, traveling by dog team, is you're more likely to see wildlife. They're so quiet when they're moving that they, unless the animals smell you coming, they don't always hear you coming. So you can surprise lynx or moose or deer, fox. And I've had rabbits and squirrels right under the dog's noses before. And, but yeah, there's, it's just neat. Just all the nature experiences that we get out here. And the thing about dog sledding is, you never know what's going to happen. My dad says you have to kind of expect the unexpected. And it's, I like that about it. Maybe that's why I'm drawn to it other than my love for dogs and the outdoors. Um, is It's just always an adventure. You never know what each run and each mile of the trail is going to be different. The dogs are each individuals. They're not robots. They're not machines. You never know what they might do. They might have a bad day or have a good day. Or, you know, you just have to kind of work with them and make them a cohesive unit. They all are teammate members and they have to work together, learn to work together as a team. And Some dogs don't like running next to other dogs, so you have to rearrange to kind of keep the team harmony <laughs> intact. And so it's just, it's just always exciting, always a venture and live with dogs. You have to be patient. They're all very special and we, we give them a lot of love and attention. You know, people sometimes feel sorry for them, but they, <laughs> It's not like we're making them pull. They love to do it. The hard part is usually holding them back. And they do get tired and they get sore and things like that. But you always got to make sure you give them enough rest and take good care of them. And we, we like to do smaller groups because we feel it's more personable. We just enjoy seeing people enjoy themselves and getting to experience what we get to experience and just bringing that joy into their life. It seems to open people up to be out in the woods with the dogs, you know, it just opens people up and you, they just feel more free to share and to talk and it's just something about it that seems to connect with people. And some came back several times in the winter and others came back year after year and some only did it once and we just had the memories. And then there was groups that we did, you know, two or three day trips in a row. We'd go to a different location each day. The magical moments that you, if you could bottle and capture those moments and sell them, you'd probably be a millionaire, you know, it's just, it's hard to describe the beautiful sunsets that you see, that we see together, and different wild animal encounters, um, it's just, it's just magical, it's just really, truly an adventure, I like the, that you never know what to expect, every day is different, but just being out there, just being out there with the dogs, and working together as a team, and it's just not, there's nothing really that can compare to that. So when cabin fever sets in, find a way to cure it. Get out and enjoy the outdoors. Winter doesn't need to be that time of year where we stay indoors waiting for spring to take over. Break away from the couch, strap on some snowshoes, hop on a dog sled, fire up the snowmobile, or drill a hole in the ice. Get out and enjoy the outdoors. Enjoy the beauty of winter. I'm Brian Whitens, and that's where I've been.